Hi everyone, this is our lecture on gene expression modifications, so let's get started. To get a clinical perspective, let's look at a quick flash case. Let's say a medical student is curious to learn more about obesity, especially since many members of his immediate family are obese. He designs gene expression modification experiments to further investigate genes of interest. Let's keep this in mind as we go through the lecture. Our learning objectives for today's lecture are to describe different strategies of gene expression modification and to compare and contrast microRNA or miRNA and small interfering RNA or siRNA. Okay, we're very broadly going to discuss gene expression modifications and we'll focus on some transgenic strategies. Let's stop right here for a second. What does the term transgenic mean? Let's look at the different parts of the word. It means that this transgenic mouse has genic or something related to genes, so genetic material, which was from something else. Remember, those words for transplants, like autograph from the same individual, allograph if it's from the same species, and xenograph if it's from one species to another. Transgenic doesn't really specify, except that the genetic material is foreign. Sometimes you may hear the term GMO, or genetically modified organism. These strategies help us see what happens when a new gene is inserted or a gene is removed or modified in some way. All right, let's keep moving forward. What type of strategies are there? Well, we could randomly insert a gene into the mouse genome. We could also do it not so randomly. We could do a targeted insertion or deletion of a gene through the process of homologous recombination with a mouse gene. Remember, homologous recombination is genetic recombination that can occur between two similar sets. In this image, new combinations of genes are produced between homologous chromosomes. Okay, now when we remove a gene, that is often referred to as knocking it out. So knockout takes it out, like in boxing. On the flip side of that would be knocking in when inserting a gene. Expression can be different based on how the gene is inserted. If it was randomly inserted, it is likely to be constitutively expressed or constantly transcribed, often referred to as always on. If the gene was targeted in its insertion, that has more controlled expression, usually with a condition that needs to be fulfilled or present for it to be expressed. Okay, let's talk about a specific type of gene expression modification known as RNA interference. RNA interference is a process in which small non-coding RNA molecules target mRNAs to inhibit gene expression. Two types are microRNAs and small interfering RNAs. Okay, let's talk about RNA interference with microRNAs first. MicroRNAs are naturally produced by the cell as hairpin structures, and loose nucleotide pairing allows broad targeting of related mRNAs. Now, this is important because it isn't so picky or specific. There is loose pairing, so it can broadly affect a certain area. When a microRNA binds to mRNA, it blocks translation of mRNA and sometimes facilitates its degradation. This is good for genes we don't want expressed so much. But what are genes that we want to be expressed? Well, there are a lot, but you can imagine that abnormal expression of microRNAs can contribute to certain malignancies. For example, silencing an mRNA from a tumor suppressor gene. Here in this image, we can see microRNA hairpin-like structure, and notice in this box how it isn't exactly a perfect match. 
there are some base mismatches, but it attaches well enough to modify expression by blocking translation of this region. Okay, next let's talk about RNA interference with small interfering RNA. Small interfering RNA is usually derived from an exogenous double-stranded RNA source, like a virus, like in this box. Once inside a cell, small interfering RNA requires complete nucleotide pairing, not broad or inexact like microRNAs, and this leads to highly specific mRNA targeting. This results in mRNA cleavage prior to translation. Small interfering RNAs can be produced by in vitro transcription for gene knockdown experiments. You may run into the term risk when reading more about RNA interference, as it stands for RNA induced silencing complex. So it can refer to using either microRNA or small interfering RNA. Great, let's do a quick flash quiz. What are two strategies for RNA interference? Yes, we can use microRNAs or small interfering RNAs. Okay, let's get back to this case. Very often when you run into gene expression modification questions, they will be theoretical lab or investigative questions that start off similar to this. Whether the question asks what type of strategy the researcher could use or what could theoretically happen if he or she used a certain strategy. In this case, we could say something about randomly inserting a gene and then could ask if the gene is more likely to be constitutively expressed or conditionally expressed. Can you remember? If it is randomly inserted, it is likely to be constitutively expressed. The question could alternatively tell you the study was designed to have loose nucleotide pairing with mRNA. If there was loose nucleotide pairing, were they more likely using microRNAs or small interfering RNAs? Yep, it'd more likely be microRNAs. Great. Well, we've made it to the end. What's the bottom line? Gene expression modifications assist in investigating gene functions. Transgenic strategies include random insertion or targeted insertion or deletion of a gene. And RNA interference uses a small non-coding RNA molecule, a microRNA or a small interfering RNA, to target mRNA to inhibit gene expression. Well, that's all I have for you here. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and it'll give you the opportunity to submit a comment if you have any feedback or questions. Thanks for joining me. Study hard.